Welcome to the program, I'm Mark Imperial. We're doing a series of spotlights on remarkable experts from across the country and even in your town. Joining me on this segment is digital and business transformation coach and executive advisor, Andrew Scott, otherwise known as Andy. So Andy, welcome to the program. Hi, Mark, How's, nice to talk to you. How are you today? I'm great, thanks, Andy. And, and thanks for taking the time to share with my audience today. Andy, first and foremost, tell us a little bit about your business and specifically, who are the types of folks that you work with and help? Sure. Well, I help uh, successful founders, CEOs, and top executives at um, companies that are doing $3 million to $3 billion in revenue. And I help them transform their personal and business performance. So they become standout players in their industry um, or as people within their company. So as we know, people, as you get higher in level, and, and obviously you're working with some, some high level folks there, the higher in success that people get, the, the different challenges that they face. So sure. could you kind of give us an insight, Andy, on like, what are the biggest challenges, maybe the number one or one or two biggest challenges that folks at those levels face? Yeah. Well, it's really interesting, Mark. Um, year after year, companies do massive uh, studies into you know what are the problems facing CEOs what are the problems facing top executives in various functions you know chief executive officers as well as CIOs chief digital officers chief marketing officers those kind of roles and the interesting thing is is that there are five areas that come up over and over again growth time to manage everything that they're doing talent and leadership strategy and how to get through all this disruption and turbulence and marketing, getting new customers. And there are those five things and they all are about 20%. They make up about 20% of the issues. So when each of these studies are done, a recent one by Forbes um, showed that those were the top five issues. And when it comes down to it, the leader, their job is to solve those problems. Yet these are the same problems that come up year after year. And then they put in place all these big strategic initiatives to address them, and 70% of those fail. And so what really comes down to is that the biggest issue is that leaders need a framework and a process by which they can address those problems reliably over and over again, and continually get better. So as you mentioned, they, they need a framework, they need a system. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the mistakes or pitfalls that you see people make that really validate sure. the point that they need yeah. that framework? I mean, one of, one of the, uh, the biggest things is that people assume, um, and they're taught this, they're taught this and they have been taught this for years, they assume that continuous improvement and all the strategic frameworks that have been put in place by uh, big, consulting corporations like McKinsey, PricewaterhouseCooper, and so on, um, they assume that continuous improvement is the way to get things done. And that was how things were when companies lasted a long time and stayed in very steady industries that lasted a long time. Well, that's not the case anymore. Um, the case today is that industries are changing rapidly, um, Companies on the you know, Fortune 500, as, a, as an example, um, in the 1960s, they, the average age of those companies, they spent 35, 40 years on the Fortune 500. Well, today that's down to about 14 years. And so you see this massive change over, um, over time. So they make this mistake that continuous improvement will get things done. And then when they come to fixing that, they think that coaching or consulting on particular line items will help get things addressed. It's a bit like taking a car and painting it when it's not running properly yet. And really what you wanna do is you wanna get this engine going that will continually transform and continually build on itself so it can be successful forever. Um, and so that's what I do is I come in and I help them put in place this framework, this transformation framework so that it can continuously transform year after year. So it sounds like some of the biggest pitfalls and mistakes are really linked to some myths or misconceptions. Uh, before we talk about the solutions, I want to dig into those a little bit. 
Are there any other misconceptions that, that you hear out there that people are following and maybe leading down the wrong path? Sure. I, I think um, you know, people also think that when they ask for help, like hiring a coach or a consultant, um, that they're doing that for a remedial reason, that somehow coaching is um, something to fix poor performance um, or something that is like more akin to therapy. Uh, and that's not um, at all the approach that I take. That's why I combine both consulting and coaching. I'm there to help the executive get the best for themselves and their team and their company. And uh, that comes from helping them solve some of the problems themselves, but also bringing my expertise. You know, I've done $4.7 billion of added profit, net profit added $4.7 billion through using this transformation process. I've launched 47 products and services. Uh, and so this stuff works. And so I can bring some of that consulting expertise, some of the know-how to those teams as well. Can you kind of go deeper and give us a, a, a sneak peek into your process and what it's like when you get in there and from figuring out what it is they need to, to helping them? What are the steps that you take them through? Sure. And well, the first step is that uh, uh, if, you, if you become a client, the first step is that you, we go through a series of diagnostics. So I spent time building um, analytics uh, and diagnostic tests that help identify the strengths and weaknesses of you and your team. And then we'll basically, we meet every month um, and we set our objectives together about what's going to be achieved. We work on problems um, together and I'm available to you then. So we'll meet at least uh, every month face to face. We'll meet weekly, um, but I'm also available there 24 seven for people to use me as a side sounding board. So if you're a client, I'm there for you. I don't take on many clients at a time because I couldn't offer to, uh, to do that if I did. And so, um, you know, my clients have 24 by seven access to me if they need help um, at any particular point in time, I'm just need a, a sounding board. Does that kind of answer your question, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. So, you, you know, going into a full di diagnostic is always the best way to start because it's how you're going to get to the, the root of the problems and then be able to give a, an effective prescription. Andy, what, what inspired you to get into this line of work and helping these high-level executives? How did you get started? Well, I, I got started, I learned very young. Uh, I started off in the Royal Air Force um, as, a, as an engineer. And uh, I learned very young that when I was given stretch assignments, that's when I grew the most. But that also caused me to get promoted very young. And all of a sudden I'm leading teams of people who were older than me, more experienced than me. And what I found is that when I set them very large transformational types of uh, targets and, and, and problems to solve, I found that seeing their joy and what could be achieved when they achieved more than they thought possible, it was uh, just a wondrous thing to me personally, it's super motivating, but also it had the side effects of taking away from all of the banter and the uh, pushback that I would get for being so young uh, and in charge of them. So it had a, an added benefit. Um, and basically then I applied this to my entire um, career. I went to British Airways and um, I grew from running one business unit to running 13. I transformed eight of them. By the time I was 30, I was already um, reporting to the board of directors at British Airways. Um, but then my kids got really sick and I couldn't spend the amount of time that I wanted to um, to you know, kind of go on to what my dream was, was to be the CEO of a big company. Um, and so I stepped down a bit and focused on a wider number of companies, broader approach and applying these transformational strategies because it brought me great joy. It brought great success for the people that I was doing this with. People would get promoted. Uh, organizations and companies would become the number one in their industry. Uh, and that was very fulfilling. And so then, you know, just more recently, um, I'd taken some time off work to really sit down and codify all of this. 
so I can take it out and uh, really help as many companies as I can uh, to be successful. Fantastic. Andy, before I ask you my last question, um, is there anything that I didn't think to ask that you feel is important to share with my audience today? And you know, perhaps some words of wisdom or uh, something that'll really bring the point home. Sure, I think that, um, look, if you, if you want to be able to solve you know, these issues that constantly come up with you and you get frustrated with you know, applying the same techniques that you have done in the past and they're not work, working as well as they did in the past, um, then time to think about taking a, a, a different um, approach. Um, as I said, you have to remember that everything that we've learned in the past has been around longevity, around stability, and we're just not in that world anymore. Um, and so I think that uh, you know, if people can take a longer term approach, um, not look for short, just short, quick actions to fix something, but really look to put in place uh, a long time process that will allow them to continuously transform year after year, then I, I think that's you know, the way forward. That's how people can become, um, you know, their companies can become almost immortal. It gives longevity, allows you to leave a legacy um, for, you know, for the future. And so that's what I would you know, kind of really say to people is that uh, uh, you know, look for the long term, not just the short term. And we can solve both. We can win today and we can win tomorrow. Great insight. Andy, for folks listening right now that fit the criteria of the folks that, that you can help, um, remind them who that is and how can they connect with you uh, and learn more? Sure. So if you're a, um, a, a top executive, a founder, a CEO, a business leader in a company that's doing anywhere from $3 million to $3 billion in revenue, um, preferably in a service or manufacturing type environment, uh, then you need to want to, um, to make a, a lasting change and work long-term. Um, I only get paid if you're successful. There's, no, um, there's nothing where you're paying me lots of money to give you advice for nothing. I'm paid on results that you get. So I'm not successful unless you're successful. And so if you want to find out more, um, then just... Uh, go to andyscotts.com forward slash yes. That's andyscotts.com forward slash yes. And we'll kick off getting you uh, some information uh, and uh, uh, see if we can help. Andy, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today. And I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thanks, Mark. Much appreciated. Take care. That was Andy Scott. Uh, and this segment's been brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's a place where busy professionals publish to get their books finally done, uh, educate their consumers, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.